What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for some more content for you guys and some more scouting reports, seeing as Pedro Porro's arrival at Tottenham Hotspur is imminent, according to Bruno Andrade. We're going to look to see what he is good at, what he's not good at, and how he's been getting on the last couple of years, specifically this season with sporting. Uh, so let's get into it. Yeah, so we're just going to um, basically look, look, we're going to look at FB Ref again. We're going to um, compare him to to what our current wing backs are offering. We're going to compare him to some of the better fullbacks, um, attacking fullbacks in the Premier League as well. Um, and we're going to see how his stats um, rack up over the last year compared to some of the uh, fullbacks um, in the top five leagues. Um, and that should give us a good indication of what Porro would bring to this team compared to our fullbacks anyway right now and what he can do with us. And uh, for me, I've, I've looked into it, I'll show you in a second, but it is quite exciting. So let's um, bring on the stats. Um, so this is Pedro Porro, um, complete scout report from the last 365 days compared to uh, the other um, fullbacks uh, in top five leagues. Um, obviously, you have to caveat all these these stats I'm showing you here with the fact that he plays in the Portuguese league. Um, um, obviously, Sporting are expected to dominate a lot of their games, albeit though this season they are fourth in Premier League. It's not like they're killing it and it's very easy, but you do have to caveat these stats by the fact that, you know, it's against a lot of Portuguese opposition, but Champions League football are included in these stats as well. So it's not just Portuguese league, but if you look at goals, assists, uh, non-penalty goals, um, his XG, uh, non-penalty XG is expected assists all in the top percentile in the whole of Europe. There are, there are basically no fullbacks in the whole of Europe better, better than Pedro Porro in expected assists, get XG. Um, and so getting goal scoring positions the, the chances he's laying on a plate for um for his teammates are amongst the best in europe which is really really encouraging um it's going to be crazy. We're going to go from one of the worst to one of the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, according to these stats, shots on target and shots total. No, very few fullbacks take more shots and have more shots on target per game. These are per 90 stats than um, Pedro Porro. Um, when it comes to um, goal to shot on target, he and th this one's quite interesting. Average shot distance, 22 yards. So um, he actually does take a lot of long shots. So even though he's having a lot of shots and gets a lot of shot on target, they are actually of most a lot of them from distance, I'm guessing a lot of free kicks and things like that um when it gets to his passing um they're fairly average uh pass completed um just above average pass attempted above average um when it when it comes to his uh long range passing he's quite good at long range but his short range passing is below average um according to these stats but what one big thing here for me is key passes, 2.82 key passes per it's 90 minutes, which for a fullback is uh, incredible. Passes into the penalty area, some of the best progressive passes above average. Crosses, um, completed crosses into the box, um, 1.16, which seems doesn't seem a lot, but it's uh, one of the best in Europe. 1.16 crosses, uh, completed crosses. Um, uh, crosses a, t a total per 90, nine crosses per 90, which is, um, a, a, you know, some of the best. I swear em Emerson averages like one or two, doesn't he? It's crazy. Yeah, I'll show you in a minute. I'll com I've compared him to um, our wing backs. I'll show you in a minute. When it comes to shot creating actions, 3.27 shot creating actions, one of the best in Europe. Um, from dribbling as well, he creates a lot from dribbling, 92% uh, from all of them, to be fair. But then we get into the defensive stats, a bit less impressive to be honest doesn't um tackles the amount of tackles he makes is below average uh tackles one uh, below average as well um drib the dribble is tackled um 44 percent so he gets beaten quite a lot um from dribbles and he gets dribble pass at least once a game which is uh, one of the worst um but very below average in europe no uh, problem when he's got romero backing him exactly up. Um, interceptions um, tackles interceptions fairly poor but what he's very good at is dribbling dribbling from the right hand side um, dribbles completed 94th percentile dribbles attempted as well so he attempts a lot and he completes a lot per game as well so very very encouraging progressive passes received as well 4.39 which is one of the best in Europe so from what we can gather from these stats extremely effective going forward 
really gets lots of shots off, gets lots of dribbles off, gets lots of crosses off as well and completes a lot of crosses. Um, defensively, not the best, but I'll also put those defensive um, stats into context as well. But these are very impressive readings um, when it comes to um, Pedro Parra compared to a lot of the fullbacks across Europe's top five leagues. Now, I want to compare him to um, our current options that we have at wing back right now and it makes stark reading so i've put i've put a comparison of pedro para up against all our current wing backs even the left wing backs as well and as well i put um jed spence in from last season i've i've chucked him in there so all the all our wing back options from this season and jed spence from last season um poro is the one hi i've highlighted him in orange there uh, one sec. Let me just zoom out a tad. So when it comes to expected assists, um, expected assists, he's way out in front, 0 0.41. Perisic is second, 0 0.26. Our current right wing options, wing back options, Emerson 0 0.02 per game and Doherty is 0 0.04. So for context, if the ex that expected assist means if you extrapolate that over a whole season, right, Doherty would be expected to get just over one assist. Emerson would be expected to get under one assist for a whole league season. Porro would be expected to get 15 assists over that season. So that just goes to show how, what a difference he makes um, from, from that. XG as well, he's way out in front, uh, 0.19. Um, Ryan Sesterjohn is actually second with 0.18 and Doherty and Emerson lagging behind as well 0.09 for Emerson 0.11 for Doherty shooting is a big one um, way out in front 2.94 shots per game if you look at our current right, uh, right wing back options Emerson and Emerson under a shot a game Doherty 1.35 shots on target as well way out in front um, but the but a key difference here is uh, shot distance. He takes a lot more long shots than um, our current wing back options. Doherty actually takes shots in the box, 12 yards out. Um, Emerson about 15 yards out. Poro's about 23 yards out. So he takes a lot more long shots than the rest. But his XG is higher, and he has a lot more shots and shots on target per 90. Um, here's the here's a big one for me. Key passes compared to our right wing back options. He 2.86 key passes a game. Um, second is Perisic at 1.99. Emerson 0.41 and Doherty 0.81. So key passes is way over double what um, they provide at the moment. Um, progressive passes as well. Actually, Emerson makes more progressive passes than him, which is interesting. Only slightly more. Um, but Poro second there. Um, Perisic is uh, out in third. When it comes to crosses per game. Perisic and, uh, and Porro both have over eight um, crosses per game. Doherty, 2.43. Emerson, 3.06. So he's like triple the amount of crosses, similar to Perisic, which is, which is vital. Um, shot creating actions um, per game, uh, way out in front again, 4.45 compared to Doherty, 2.43. Emerson, 2.15. Um, Perisic, 2.98. So he's quite far in front. Um, but defensive actions, he's one of the poorest in the squad. Tackles per game, he's near the bottom. Tackles uh, one per game. Um, yeah, Doherty and Emerson have better than him. Uh, tackles in the defensive third, he's at the bottom. In the midfield third, he's average. But actually, tackles in the attacking third, he's near the top. But I think it kind of makes sense that with the defensive actions because Spurs play quite deep. And um, and we're inviting attacks onto us all the time, so it's expected for our wing backs to make more tackles. Sporting mm. are one of the best teams in their league, and they're always on the front foot, and they're I think most likely going to be in the other team's half for the majority of games. So it kind of makes sense that. Yeah, I guess. Um, and he also presses higher, a lot higher up than Emerson and Doherty as well. So I think that's a fair assumption when it comes to, to uh, dribbling, um, tackling dribblers. Though um, he is, he doesn't, he fares fairly well. Um, but his tackle percentage is the lowest, 52%. But he attempts more than anyone else. So he attempts, he gets nearer to a lot of his dri uh, uh, dribblers, but he does get beaten a lot. He's actually dribbled past more than any of our defenders right now, even more than someone like Perisic right now. So um, that is something to be concerned is about. Is that worry coming up against better quality of players as well in the Premier League? Something to be worried about. I think it's something to definitely watch out for. I think, look, 
no player is perfect. He's 23 years old. He could definitely improve. But you have to take the good with the bad. It's a bit like uh, Trent at the moment. I mean, at the moment, the bad, you could argue, is outweighing the good. But he's so good going forward. He outweighs maybe his defensive uh, um, deficiencies. For the most part of his career so far. For yeah. most part. Maybe not right now. But, you know, when when, when it comes to Porro, clearly, um, defensively, he's, uh, he's got some work to do. But you could argue with his attacking uh, output probably outweighs um, his ev- defensive output for me everything that that's like not the best metric from Poro right now in terms of these FB FB ref stats is something that p- can be coached in in him in terms of his passing and his defensive capabilities and uh, I think Antonio Conte is the perfect manager for him whether he's here for the long term or not is um, is a different story but I think these things, I mean, I don't really, look, obviously you've got to be cautious and be wary of the passing stats and the defensive stats, but I think that's going to come with age and come with experience, especially in the Premier League and with a better manager um, coaching him as well. Yeah, I would think so as well. I, I agree. Um, when it comes to dribbling, he, like himself, he's pretty strong. He um, completes second only to Jed Spence, who completed more dribbles last season. Um, his dribble success rate, is not the best, but he attempts a lot more dribbles than most of our other wing-back options as well, 3.7 a game. Um, touches in the attacking third, way out in front, seven more than the nearest person at 32 a game, Perisic 25. Touches in the box, he's more than everyone else as well, just slightly higher than Perisic and Doherty. Um, so he definitely gets forward and he and he, and he t- and he's getting a lot of the possession in the final third as well. And as well, if you're comparing him to some of the top wing backs in um, in England right now, like against I've compared him against Trippier, Reese James, and Trent Alexander Arnold. He has very similar kind of stats to them. They're obviously a lot better than what we have right now. And his XG, uh, non penalty XG and XA is uh, better than all of them right now. Although they're in the Portuguese, in the Portuguese league, they're in the Premier League. But his expected assist is higher than um, all of them. Um, he the crosses he um, sorry his key passes is second only to Kieran Trippier uh, right now in, in compared to all those players. Uh, his uh, crosses per game um, is stacks up against um, all these other players. It's second only again to Kieran Trippier who does 10 per game, but he does nine. So um, as well, his shot creating actions, second only to Kieran Trippier. It shows how, what an amazing season Trippier is having, but um, his shot creating actions as well. But his unfortunately his defensive work is one some of the worst um, on the list as well. Uh, tackles one, um, dribbled pass per game. Uh, Trippi has actually dribbled pass a bit more than him, but he's second on that list. Trippi is the best right back in the league at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Um, and his dribbling per game, best dribbler on that list. He's better than dribb- he's better dribbling than all the other ones at the moment. He attempts more dribbles as well. So he's actually in terms of numbers, um, like if you compare the numbers like Poro's getting and these top fullbacks are getting and the numbers that Emerson and Doherty are getting, it's a different league. Like Poro's getting these similar numbers compared to um, compared to the top wingbacks more than he's getting compared to Emerson and Doherty. But in terms of these numbers, do you expect these numbers to go down once he's against better opposition and once he's in the Premier League in a much better league as well? Potentially, but I've also just isolated his um, his stats just in the Champions League, and um, if you if you isolate his uh, Is that just this season, there's two. There's one for this. He was in. He's been Champions League for this season, last season. Now Champions League, he they defend a lot more, so they're they're camp they count back a, a bit more, and they're not on the as on the front foot. I would argue once he comes to Spurs. He would. I don't think he would be like sporting in the Champions League. I think in a lot of games we would be on the front foot. I think we would have a lot of possession. I don't think. Um, I, I don't think he. He would obviously do more defending than he's doing now in the Premier League. But I don't think he's going to be a wing back, which is going to be stuck in his uh, defensive third a lot. I do think he's going to be flying forward. But if you look at the stats, the majority of games, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, in in the Spurs shirt, but if you look at the stats, obviously his, his attacking stats in the Champions League are not as high. They're not as impressive. Still gets quite a lot of shots off, um, above average, and shots on target. His xG and xA, his xG is below average. His xA is a bit above average, but it's not like we see in the Premier League. But where he actually excels um, in the Champions League, key passes again as well, a bit below average, not compared to what he does in Portugal. Uh, but defensively. Um, 
his stats are a lot more impressive. This shows how much defending he does in Chambio's defensive stats are a lot more impressive. So yeah. he wins a lot more tackles. So he shows he can do Which it. Which is pretty much what I was alluding to before, right? Saying that Sporting obviously play more on the front foot in the league and um, it does it makes sense that his defensive stats aren't big in, the, in those leagues so they don't have to do that much defending albeit they aren't top of the league they're fourth in the league but still I think the point still stands and then when it moves into the Champions League where they do have to do a bit more defending you can see the stats do stack up it shows he can do the defensive game when he needs to um, when the, the, with these def um, defensive stats and what's also crucial is in the Champions League um, if you're thinking like you know he's dribbling just past rubbish players in the Premier League well in the Champions League here here, his dribbles completed and dribbles attempted are still amongst the best in, in Europe when it comes to dribbling so he does definitely have beating of better quality defenders and I think that bodes well for the Premier League um, when he when he comes um, to Spurs um, I still believe that uh, defensively um, sorry dr uh, from a dribbling point of view he's going to be able to take on um, some of the wing backs and wingers um, in the Premier League as well which is promising uh, for me um, obviously it's the, he's not in the Champions League, he doesn't get in as many goal-scoring positions and mm. his expected assists aren't as good. Um, but I do believe when he comes to Spurs, um, uh, he will be, it will be a different story. Because I, I do believe for Spurs, he's going to be given, um, he's going to be given license to get forward. And I believe he's got the quality. And also, if you go here, this is his Champions League um, performance uh, last season. His um, offensive stats stack up again. Like, he's still got pretty good offensive stats. This is in the Champions League last season. What did they do last year in the Champions League? I'm not... I think they went out to City in the in the um, last 16, I think, if I'm right. I, I, and if I'm right, I think they're still in the Champions League this year, right? They got through our group. Through us, yeah. yeah, they went through our group. I think they finished um, second. So, um, last season, the Champions League is XG and his XA, his expected assist stack up with the best. Um, he still gets uh, a lot of crosses, it, where's his crosses in the box. Um, a key passes, still a bit below average, but expected assist is very high. Um, crosses in the box, he's still getting a lot of crosses in. Um, and crosses completed, uh, let me see if I can find that, where's crosses completed. Uh, crosses into penalty area, okay, still fairly below average in the Champions League, but my point is, he's, he proves um, last season that his attacking stats are still fairly high in the Champions League. So even though this season they're, they're a bit below par, last season he showed as well, he can still um, do a lot of attacking. So for me, um, yes, you have to caveat his amazing offensive stats this season with the fact that a majority of them are in the Premier League. But if you do isolate his Champions League stats from this season and last season, he has showed... Um, that he can do it at a higher level. So that, for me, bodes well for when he comes to the Premier League. Yeah, look, I think it's um, it's brilliant viewing that. It really is, because when you're looking at the, the wing-backs that we do have on that side, Emerson, Doherty, um, we know where their flaws are, and it seems as though Pedro Porro really excels at what they're bad at. And um, look, it's going to be a great signing. It really is. He's the number one target that we wanted. Um, and those stats are such great reading. They really are. They're exciting I reading. I hope when he you read can them. transfer that into the Premier League quite seamlessly and quite quickly. Yeah, look, there's obviously going to be a question mark as to um, how he'll adapt. But I, I, what I would say is, when it comes to that question, when he did play against Spurs and when he did play against City last season, I've seen um, I've seen like uh, he there was like an individual compilation of his performance against Man City last season. He's a clean sheet against City in the second game. They did, yeah. They lost five 0 in the first game. Yeah, but, but I'm uh, saying still in an isolated game when he played, they still kept a clean sheet. Yeah, and Spurs they drew one one away and we lost two 0 at home um, at their place. So and and he was brilliant in yeah. both those games. Yeah. So he's shown he could definitely perform against Premier League opposition, the Champions League. From those stats for me and and, your ju and from what I can tell for sure it's something to be excited about he's clearly a very adept um, right wing back at crossing the ball into the penalty area creating chances getting shots on goal he takes penalties corners and free kicks for sporting that to me as well um, shows good um, tells me he's got good technique and he and and they trust his delivery Maybe and from start what scoring a few free kicks yeah from what i understand he's pretty they're pretty good as well like his corners are very good he gets good whip on them um his free kicks are accurate and he, he takes penalties as well that shows good technique so and i think very importantly is he has the ability to dribble which none of our wing backs right now have and that's vital when it and, and he's shown in the champions league he's got good completion rates when it comes to dribbling and he dribble and he uh, attempts a lot of dribbles so 
that as well shows um, something that we are missing in the wing-back area. So for me, from what I'm reading into those stats, even when you take into account Champions League isolation, it's impressive and it's something to be excited about. Can you get um, Carl Walker's stats from when in his last couple of years at Spurs on there and compare it to that? It'll be really interesting to see the comparisons there. I don't know if they, they would have it on there or not. I but, don't know um, if it goes as back as... Um, I could try. Um, I don't know if it goes as far back as... It'd be interesting to see that because obviously what I'm looking at is trying to get back to that Danny Rose, Carl Walker dynamic that we had. And it'd be potentially to see for next season if we can get Poro and Adogi in those wing-back positions to see if, they, if Let me they're see bringing if I can do a it. bit of a similar attacking output to Spurs. But when you're looking at those numbers that um, that you've pulled up there, I mean, my eyes just light up being like, wow, uh, what an attacking player we're bringing into this club. And if you would have asked anyone the number one target at right wing-back that you wanted, he would have been it. And there's probably no one that was gettable at right wing back, that, that's a better signing than Pedro Porro. They don't have the stats, unfortunately. Right, fair They've enough. only got the basic ones for that season. But um, in terms of like assists and stuff, like just basic assists, it's fairly similar. Mm -hmm. Like, in fact, Porro is much better, to be honest. But it's you can't read too much into it mm. and in terms of that, in terms of um, they, they don't drill down into very detailed uh, stats enough. there. Fair enough. I think that, look, we can all agree that we're very excited for this signing to come through. Hopefully uh, nothing goes wrong with this transfer and we do get it over the line. But when you're look thinking about rating a transfer like this, I'm literally putting it as a 9 or a 10 because it's a position we desperately need. Is the best option we could have got. The stats speak for itself attacking-wise. I just think that he can improve on those passing and defensive stats, especially with a manager like Antonio Conte at the helm as well. Yeah, and I'm hoping once he, Antonio Conte gets a hold of him, he can really improve um, in that wing-back slot and, and get even better, like we've seen him do with a lot of wing-backs. And I think the stats tell me that he's everything we want him to be. And that's the most promising thing. And that's all you can really do. If it turns out that, you know... Um, maybe he's not as good as some of the things portrayed then it is what it is but when you're if you're a scout or you're or, or if you're watching his game and you're looking at what Tottenham want in a wing back I think he's everything That's you want everything yeah. he's everything you want and well, that, for ma majority of what we want yeah yeah basically no no player in the world is perfect but he's look from statistically he's as close to what we want as possible pretty yeah. as, as you can get um maybe you can improve in a few areas but he remember he's still fairly young 23 he's got a lot yeah. of scope to improve so look it's really promising for me i'm excited by this i think it's time to get excited and let's hope we can get this deal over the line as soon as possible because i can't wait to see him in the team all right so there you have it that is your pedro poro scouting report a lot a lot, a lot, a lot to get excited about in those stats in this video that we've just brought to you. So thank you everyone for watching today. Let me know in the comments section below how excited you are to bring Pedro Porro through the door. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.